gangs in Alabama. Perhaps the first thing that comes to mind with Alabama isn't exactly gangs, but you'll be surprised to know that the state of Alabama is completely infected with gang activity, and in fact, it is one of the most gang-infected states in the country. Predominantly, African-American gangs are the most common that you'll find in the state of Alabama, but much of the rural state is also littered with neo-Nazi groups, hate groups, and neo-Confederate affiliations. Even many so-called churches are nothing more than cover stories for the Klan. Just like Atlanta, Birmingham is also a highway hub of America, and being located at the gateway of the east of the United States, Alabama is a massive trafficking hub. At first glance, Alabama might not seem like the type of place that will be infected with gangs, but if you know what to look for, and you think about its geographical location and demographics, as well as the state's economy, you'll quickly understand how massive gangs are in this state. I actually lived in the state of Alabama, and while living in Alabama, gang violence was at the top of the concerns that I had while living here. One day I went to the mall in Montgomery, Alabama to buy a hat, and I realized that the hat store only had three single hat patterns that they were selling. The Georgia Bulldogs, which didn't make a lot of sense. See, back at that time, I really didn't understand too much of what all these symbols meant. So if you don't know what you're looking for, you're never really going to understand how prevalent gang activity is in Alabama. But once you understand the hats, the symbols, the brands, and the specific things that identify people as members, you'll start to realize how scary and gang-infected Alabama really is. Birmingham, Alabama has a murder rate that's four times higher than Atlanta. Birmingham, Alabama's murder rate is more than five times higher than Oakland, California. In fact, the entire state of Alabama's murder rate is more than two times higher than the city of Los Angeles. That should just give you an indication how much violence there is in the state, and gangs are a huge part of it. Every state's gang problem is unique to the demographic composition of the region. For example, the state of Florida has a large Hispanic and Caribbean community. Alabama has a very small foreign-born population. These are the top 10 cities in Alabama with the largest gang problem. Number 10 is Phoenix City. Located next to Columbus, Georgia, a larger city that is infected with gangs. Alabama's prison systems are the worst in the country, and law enforcement relentlessly targets drug activity with some of the harshest penalties and worst prisons you could imagine. Thus, most of the drug use that's heavy in southeastern Alabama is stored directly in Columbus, Georgia, and moved into Phoenix City in small batches. Because Phoenix City is on this Georgia-Alabama border, different states with different laws, it's become a convenient place for a lot of gang activity. Criminals take advantage of the more relaxed regulations in Georgia and use Columbus as a staging ground to Uber anything they need trafficked into Alabama. Historically, Phoenix City has been known as a mob town, and its elements of the criminal world are not recent, but stem back as far as the 1900s. Both African American and Anglo gangs use this strong trafficking corridor, making Phoenix City one of the most drug-infected and crime-infected places in all of Alabama. There's literally no industry in this part of the state, and a disturbingly high percentage of the population lives in government housing. These antiquated government subsidized housing complexes are like a breeding ground for gangs, and much of the residential areas today lie abandoned. Number nine is Tuscaloosa. Perhaps the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the city, the University of Alabama, the champion football team. But on the streets of this city, not everyone's made the right decisions with their life, and there's a lot of gang activity in neighborhoods that are absolute slums. Despite being a place for opportunity for a lot of people, not everybody in this city is benefiting from the football, the university, and the more affluent lifestyle of the students who are able to afford newer housing. 
It's really a city of two faces, one of opportunity and prosperity, but for others, the reality of living in this Alabama city is rundown slums, gang activity, and dangerous neighborhoods. The influx of students and other people, both for the university as well as large events, means that the local dealers have extra opportunities to generate money in an otherwise economically deprived region of the state. Mercedes-Benz also has a plant outside the city. These outside sources of income that don't exist in the state of Alabama or even more opportunities for your local dealers to make a buck where they usually couldn't in the starving state of Alabama where most of the consumption revolves around the first of the month when people get their government checks. The auto industry, university, and large events means that Tuscaloosa has a source of money and revenue that other parts of the state don't have. Yet that stands in stark contrast to the poverty that the local population lives in Number eight is Pritchard, Alabama, part of the Mobile metropolitan area. This area was blocked away by the highways as the highway systems grew in the United States. The state of Alabama decided that they wanted to literally disenfranchise this community by putting highways, dividing the community right in half. This destroyed all the local businesses and it was done out of racism to segregate and to harm the African-American community that was here. The state of Alabama literally used the highways as walls to fence off this African-American sector of the city, leaving Pritchard pretty much abandoned and isolated economically, and gangs soon took root here. Not only was this area walled off physically, but it was also choked of resources and basic functions like garbage collection still do not exist in much of Pritchard today. The streets flood, they're inaccessible, there's absolutely no public funding, and if you end up living here, it's like living in another world. The state of Alabama abandoned this community, walled it off, and choked it of resources. Thus, the only way people found to make a living was through criminal elements. Today, gang violence plagues this community, and it is one of the most gang-infected places in the entire state of Alabama. The community of Pritchard really is a testament that if you purposely want to create a horrible place by isolating a community, you can accomplish that. And today, Pritchard is one of the most dangerous and disadvantaged places you can live in the entire state of Alabama. Pritchard has to be one of the most marginalized communities in the United States where the destruction of this community was pretty much done intentionally because the people here were of an African background in a state where hate is still a problem that affects the lives of people on a daily basis. Number 7. Mobile, Alabama Located at the intersection of Interstate 65 and I-10, it is the entryway as well into the East Coast, everything that's coming along the Gulf Coast coming straight from the Mexico border has to pass through Mobile, Alabama. It is nothing more than a transit point, a city that's economically deprived, poverty, some of the lowest life expectancies of any metropolitan area in the country are right here. The leading causes of death here are many times violence as well as unhealthy lifestyles. Gangs are prevalent. Being one of the five large cities in Alabama, Mobile has always been plagued with high homicide rates and a large percentage of that coming directly from gang activities. Along the Gulf Coast of Mexico, where four states meet, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida, four states that are key geographical stationing points for trafficking, Mobile sits in the heart of one of the most dangerous regions of the country. Between Louisiana's, New Orleans, the murder capital, Mississippi, Jackson, Birmingham, this entire region of the country is plagued with cities that have high homicide rates. The violence here is out of control and gangs play a huge role in it. Mobile, Alabama geographically sits in the heart of all of these complicated and dangerous regions. Number six, 
Selma, Alabama. Perhaps when you hear the word Selma, you might think about the Civil Rights Movement. Selma, Alabama was an instrumental site during the Civil Rights Movement, and to this day, the history of the city is known throughout the entire world. However, the city streets of Selma are an absolute war zone. Gangs are fierce, and it is a violent city. Because of its historical importance, Selma should really be an icon of American African American heritage. However, the state of Alabama continues to choke this city out of resources and ensure that its heritage and the city streets continue to fall apart into ever more difficult stages of disrepair to where the point of people having to leave their communities because they're being choked of resources. In this vacuum of resources, bad schools, and literally no opportunity, the youth of Selma is many times left with no other option or better alternatives than to join criminal activities on the streets, and gangs play a huge role in the violence that takes place in this city. It really is an embarrassment that a city with so much historical importance is in this condition, but that just lets you know how the state of Alabama really is. It's a state that purposely makes sure that their African American communities fail, and well, here are the results. Gang infected Selma, Alabama, a dangerous city, one that's in disrepair, a city that really deserves better, but look at the state it's in. One of the most embarrassing relics, proving that almost nothing has really changed in Alabama since the Civil Rights Movement. The city streets are active and very reactive, a dangerous place to be. The residents of Selma describe that the violence in the city is more likened to a war zone, out of proportionately massively violent, Selma, Alabama has a fierce reputation. Number 5. Huntsville, Alabama, the best of Alabama's large cities. Huntsville is now the largest city in Alabama, overtaking other cities that are declining. It's actually known as a safe, fast-growing city with a lot of opportunity, incredible amount of jobs, affordability, great shopping, and an awesome southern culture. Home to auto manufacturing and other large agencies that have gone on a campaign with a top 10 list ranking Huntsville as the best place to move in the country. These top 10 lists are paid by the companies to ensure that they can convince people to move to Huntsville. However, while the people that are moving to Huntsville are very successful, there's a portion of the population that's native to here that isn't doing anything with their lives the native Alabamians. All that growth and prosperity is the people that move to Huntsville from other places. But when you look at the native-born population of the city, a lot of them are involved in a lot of gang activity, and the city, believe it or not, has a huge gang presence. So while for some Huntsville is a place of prosperity and newfound growth in the South, for the people that are from here and stuck in this city, Gangs are a part of everyday life. You have the typical African-American gangs, but you also now have an influx of people from other places, which means that numerically, there's actually more gangs here than in other parts of the state. As we all know, coming from the history of California, that gangs form as a way to protect minorities when they're being oppressed. That's how California became so bad with gang activity. Huntsville is the only large concentration of African Americans in the northern part of the state. While most of the southern part of the state is up to 50% black, in the northern region of the state, Huntsville is the only place that has a significant African American community. And thus, gangs have formed here to protect their communities from the white oppressors. Because there's no significant black population in northern Alabama, most of the rural jobs are taken by Hispanics, and there's a few regions in northern Alabama that have larger Hispanic populations, places like Decatur, Albertville, and also in the area of Coleman, you have a larger Hispanic population because the black population is absent. In jobs like meat processing plants and agriculture that the white population doesn't want to engage in, but are essential to the area's economy. And you're finding now that in rural North Alabama, you're starting to see a huge influx of Latino gangs. 
as a source of protection, being a minority in a very racist region of the country. Thus, Huntsville and the surrounding rural areas actually have a lot of gang activity. Many people who are minorities that have moved to the Huntsville area to live or to work temporarily have also reported that they've had difficulties in the workplace as many times white gangs or motorcycle gangs are going to try to intimidate or force those people to leave the communities because they don't want those minorities doing these jobs. So the labor force here is also somewhat entangled into a gang-like mentality of who gets to have those jobs. And many times the people enforcing those racist regulations are going to be along the lines of motorcycle gangs, Aryan gangs, or whatever demographic controls the region. Thus, Huntsville really is a mess when it comes to gangs. And it's not just for street-level narcotic sales. You're also dealing with a problem that goes as deep as the labor force itself, your actual job. The courts and law enforcement also play into this, making sure that certain demographics are intimidated. Marshall County, just to the south of Huntsville, has the largest Latino population of any county in Alabama. And here as well, Latinos have to have gangs to protect themselves. The whole area really has a huge mess of gang activity, and it spreads far outside of Huntsville into the rural communities. Number four, Bessemer, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham. Okay. Ooh, gunshots, and we're in the middle of the city. Bessemer, Midfield, Fairfield, these suburbs that are just to the west of Birmingham are some of the most gang-infected regions of the entire state. The murder rates here are absolutely insane. Gang violence is normal, and as you can see from that video, gunshots take place in the middle of the city in broad daylight. Gangs control this area. It's dangerous. It's a decrepit urban setting with rundown buildings, dangerous neighborhoods that even in the daylight can erupt into violence. There's not much positive that can be said about this area. It simply is a gang infested section of an urban core. Central American communities have been brave enough to move into these neighborhoods and try to fix up some houses and start businesses, but they've encountered relentless persecution from African American gangs who under a racist pretext go after these minority groups that law enforcement refuses to take police reports from. Many U.S. citizens have reported that while trying to file police reports, they are told by law enforcement that they are illegals and that they don't have the right to file police reports and make criminal complaints. We're talking about U.S. citizens. Clearly, again, racism continues to play a huge role in the violence and gang activity takes advantage of the state's racism to ensure that they can victimize people who are unprotected by the law. This area is completely devoid of life, good vibes, it's just a rundown negative place, a scary place to live where even if you are victimized by gangs, chances are law enforcement is going to hurt you more by showing up than they are going to do anything to help you. And that's by no means an exaggeration. That's an accurate description of life in Alabama. Here, gangs focus on robberies, extortions, and finding minorities or other vulnerable individuals that are not likely to be able to report to law enforcement. Law enforcement is many times complicit with these gangs, which means that if you contact law enforcement, then they just double back and come at you harder the second time to kind of concrete in the notion that the law here is completely ineffective. Bessemer and the surrounding suburbs west of Birmingham are completely gang-infested crap hole, where cowardice criminals prey on vulnerable people in society. And law enforcement views it all as a good source of entertainment. Number three is Dauphin, Alabama. Despite being a smaller city, it has a fierce reputation. Gang violence here is just part of the city's culture, and the people here take the gang violence naturally. A city surrounded by rural southern Alabama and southern Georgia impoverished regions, it is a natural drawing centerpiece of all of the criminal activity in this region of the state and gangs are a massive problem here. Number two, Montgomery, Alabama, AKA the Gump. This city has local gangs based off of each side of the city. You have your typical African-American gangs 
And you also have suburbs that have their own neighborhood gang associations as well. It means that the city is packed with gang activity. The city has large government housing complexes. These areas naturally become hubs for gangs. They prey on the innocence of the youth, telling them that the gang lifestyle will bring them cars, jewelry, and women, and forgetting to tell them that most likely they're going to end up dead or in prison for the rest of their lives. Misleading the youth and recruiting them at a young age is an essential part of gang integration, and this is how they take advantage of the city's most poor and disadvantaged communities to turn their youth into criminals. Typical Friday night in Montgomery or a Saturday night at around 9 o'clock, you better hope you're home because anyone out in the streets after that time is just engaging in all types of gang activity. Shootouts, it's just a normal weekend activity in Montgomery. The city is plagued with so many criminal activities. Gangs are a huge part of it. They don't mark territories. They don't have gang graffiti. They just have their own neighborhood organizations. They know who the ops are, the neighborhoods know who their enemies are, and they're in a constant battle. Montgomery's murder rate is now two times higher than Chicago, and while most of the gang activity is centered around the west side of the city, on the north side of the city, the east, and even the far east suburbs all have gangs today. Suburbs like Millbrook and Wetumpka also have gangs. Once you get into the rural communities, then you have neo-Nazi, neo-Confederate, and prison gangs. Also, you have law enforcement officers who work within the large Elmore County Prison. They're somewhat of a gang themselves who makes money by bringing illegal substances like cell phones and other things into the prison, making as much as $2,000 per each delivery. In the words of Montgomery rapper legend who is now gone, Doe B, in Montgomery, Alabama, the first of the month is like a holiday. When people get their disability and SSI checks, keep in mind that in Alabama, a huge portion of the population simply lives off of their government. Many people pretend to have a disability so they can get an SSI check. Other people are waiting for food stamps. The deal is that when those benefits hit, they go straight to the dope spots. And in Alabama, those days when people get their government checks are the days that they hit the trap houses. Around the 27th for the 28th, they make their deliveries and prepare everything. And by the first of the month, it's like a holiday in Montgomery, Alabama. Everybody gets their disabilities, their SSI checks. They hit the trap spots and it gets wild in the city. There's not really a lot of money to be made in Montgomery when it comes to criminal activity. It's mostly young people who want to go on the internet and flaunt that they're in some type of gang. In reality, it's a starving, poor, broke city with not even that much money in the market. It's just a poor, impoverished place where people use their SSI checks to buy drugs and the youth really don't have any opportunity or guidance. There's nobody to teach them the right way to go. Montgomery is a dangerous city to live in and gangs here as well like to victimize people who are most vulnerable. I've seen how gangs operate in the state of Florida where I lived, but when I lived in Montgomery, it was almost shameful and embarrassing how cowardly these gangs move. They literally just look for the weakest victims they can. And anybody coming out of Montgomery who gets too much fame or gets too much clout on the internet gets taken out by jealousy. Nobody really makes it out of this place. If you get too big, certainly somebody's going to take you out just out of jealousy. I was really dumbfounded by the miserable mindset of people in the city. As a Hispanic with absolutely no friends or family in Alabama, I had to by myself fend off both Anglo-Saxon racist groups like clans, 
as well as African American gangs. Montgomery really is a crime and gang infested city. If you're sending your children to the schools here, many times they don't even have air conditioning or heating in the schools. But they keep their Confederate cemeteries perfectly groomed. And that is why Montgomery, Alabama is one of the worst cities to live in the entire country. They care more about their Confederate grave sites than they do about the schools where the future of the state is being produced. When you focus on the hate of the past and take away resources from the schools to take care of historical crap of the past, of the failures and embarrassments of America's past, you can understand that the future of this state, and in particular the city of Montgomery, the youth is pressured to join gangs, and there are plenty to choose from in Montgomery, Alabama. Number one is Birmingham, Alabama, a hub for drug distribution. This city is so dangerous that you don't even have to be involved in criminal activities. Just driving into the wrong neighborhood can get you shot up, Swiss cheesed up, simply because they're not going to take chances. If you enter the wrong neighborhood, they'll shoot first and ask questions later. The murder rate in Birmingham, Alabama is about four times higher than Chicago, Illinois. And because it has a smaller population, you don't see it in the national rankings. But if Birmingham had a larger population, its murder rate would be higher than St. Louis and Detroit. Birmingham is a city that's literally falling apart. In many ways, you can say that Birmingham really is the most dangerous city in the United States. And this city isn't about marking up gang territory with graffiti or wearing a specific color. It's straight up neighborhood versus neighborhood, opposition versus opposition, and the numbers don't lie. It's the deadliest city in America. When you mention gang culture in the United States, California comes to mind. However, California can't compete with the murders in Birmingham. Birmingham's murder rate is four to five times higher than California's worst cities like Oakland or San Bernardino. These cities' murder rates are only a fraction of Birmingham's, which means that despite California having a reputation for having the worst gang problem in the United States, it's actually Birmingham where most of the gang murders are taking place. Going down the wrong street in Birmingham, Alabama can get you shot up, no questions asked, shoot first, ask questions later. Because the city is so dangerous, there's no time to react, there's no time to question, it just gets to the business. Gang culture is a massive percentage of the violence that takes place in Birmingham, Alabama. Despite the city being more than 80% African American today, the minority, the white population, takes home four times more income than the blacks. So even though the population in Birmingham is predominantly black, the top earning income people are all white. And all of the money that's generated in Birmingham leaves every day to the suburbs in adjacent Shelby County, which is the richest county in Alabama by income. And many years back, it had a higher income than any other county in Florida, for example, which goes to show that there actually is a lot of money in the Birmingham metropolitan area. It just isn't in the city limits of Birmingham where the black population lives. Just like Detroit was once a great American city, Birmingham in its day was a great American city. But today it lies abandoned, dangerous, and quite frankly, segregated with all of the prosperity being on the other side of that mountain that's in front of us. That mountain separates the white people from the black people. On one side, you have some of the most beautiful, richest neighborhoods in Alabama. And on the other side, you have the city of Birmingham, the most dangerous city in the country. The most dangerous mid-sized city in the country by murder rate is adjacent to one of the most beautiful places in the south, Shelby County, suburbs like Homewood. Birmingham also has one of the largest concentrations of public government housing in the United States and these government housing complexes many times beef with one another and that's a huge source of the violence as well. Entering one of these complexes at night is extraordinarily dangerous. They're hubs for drug transactions, gang activity, and anyone who enters into these places and is not familiar is quite literally risking their lives. Many times these projects are going to have their own surveillance to make sure that they scope out anybody that enters these communities so like on this video where i'm driving around 
at some point a vehicle is going to follow you and they're going to find out exactly who you are and if they think you're a threat chances are you're going to be dead before you get a chance to escape law enforcement is fairly ineffective criminals are not afraid to hurt you in birmingham chances are if you're in the wrong place that's enough for law enforcement to feel like they have no reason to investigate any further and despite the fact that birmingham is one of the most dangerous cities in the country Law enforcement is not interested in going after the gang members as long as they're hurting immigrants and other black people. The police in Alabama, as long as they don't hurt white people, that's where they can't go. As long as they're hurting each other, law enforcement in Alabama is happy letting them all kill each other because at the end of the day, one less black person is exactly what the state of Alabama wants. So if they're killing each other, all the better for them. And that's really what emboldens criminals in Alabama that law enforcement isn't going after them. Law enforcement's glad they're all killing each other. I remember talking to a friend in Alabama and asking him, why do you hate me so much? Why do people here in Alabama hate me so much for being an outsider? And he told me, Jose, we don't even love each other. How can we love somebody else? You'll find that in Birmingham, Alabama, despite all the crime going on, law enforcement is busy doing DUI checkpoints and pulling people over around Hispanic areas to see if they can catch an illegal or if they can catch somebody who's from another country and harass them. You would think with all the murders and crimes, law enforcement would be focusing on that, but they're not. They're solely focused on harassing minority communities. So if you're driving around Birmingham at night, you'll just see law enforcement profiling people who look like they're not from Alabama. It's crazy, you're driving through Birmingham at night and just about the only areas where you're going to see law enforcement is in the areas where they could catch a Hispanic or somebody coming back from work. And quite simply, most cops know who the real criminals are and they're not gonna risk their life for a paycheck going after these real hardcore criminals. They're gonna go after small street level crime, which means that the real criminals have complete free reign in Birmingham, which explains why it's just a dangerous city because if nobody's going after the criminals, that's why they feel like they have free reign. That's why they commit so many crimes because the cops are too afraid to go after them or too busy carrying out their personal agendas of going after the immigrants that they hate. And they really are targeting minorities in Birmingham. Even if you are a tourist just driving through the city, if you are not from Alabama, if you don't look like you're from Alabama, the gangs are going to target you because they know that law enforcement is not going to be interested in investigating it. Gangs and criminals here operate with complete immunity. All right, guys, those are the top 10 worst cities in Alabama for gang activity. And if I had to add a few other cities to the list, I guess maybe Troy, Alabama could have came in at number 11. If there's another city that you think could have made today's list, let me know. Keep in mind that the state of Alabama's murder rate for the whole entire state, including its rural communities, is higher than Oakland, California, and San Bernardino, the most dangerous cities in California, which means that even small towns and rural areas in Alabama can be very dangerous. Right after Louisiana and Mississippi, Alabama is the third most dangerous state in the country and undoubtedly organized crime plays a huge role into making Alabama a horrible place to live. Even scarier is the notion that government agencies, law enforcement, and the government of the state is also complicit in criminal activity. The state is known as the most corrupt state in the country. Despite it being a very easy state to make a living, most people will not move to Alabama despite its affordability because they know it's a dangerous place to be. And any money that you accumulate or anything that becomes yours can easily be taken from you via crime, intimidation, or extortion. You cannot deny the analytical information. Alabama is the third most dangerous state. It has the number one highest murder rate of any large city, Birmingham. These analytics are all conclusive. The state of Alabama also has the worst prison system in the entire country. The horror stories of inmates being killed in Alabama's prisons have become the headline of every night news. Just this week, 
I saw three individual incidents of inmates dying in Alabama. One story you may have heard on the news about an inmate who had his heart disappear. I believe he was serving 99 years for a robbery. You just don't get 99 years for a robbery in most states. And you know, this hard-handed approach on crime doesn't work either. The states that have the hardest, harshest criminal systems like Alabama and Louisiana also happen to have the worst crime of all states, which means that the legal system, the courts, and the judicial, do a decimal system, the judicial, the judicial, the, 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 the prison system in Alabama is broken. It's dysfunctional. There's even a case where inmates were released to commit murders. They're actually letting the inmates out on the streets to commit murders. How can law enforcement find out who the killers are when many times the killers are supposed to be in prison so they're not even suspects? Living in Alabama for a year was the most terrifying year of my life. And the things that I saw in Alabama in just one year were some of the most disgusting and disturbing things I've seen my entire life. And gang violence was at the top of the reasons I hated living in Alabama. They were constantly victimizing you, looking for opportunities to rob you. And when you contacted law enforcement, it seems like law enforcement was more scary than the actual criminals that rob you. I am so glad that I was able to escape this nightmare called Alabama alive. And today, I spent a lot of the time on my channel warning people about the state of Alabama so they don't have to live the nightmare that I lived. Perhaps to the people who are from Alabama and grew up around this environment, this is all just part of life to them. But me, who grew up in South Florida, I was shocked at the things that I saw living in Alabama. And I want to make it a point to teach people these things so they don't make the same mistake that I did. As housing costs becomes extraordinarily unaffordable, many of us look to more affordable options. But when you end up in these cities, Baton Rouge's, Montgomery's, Birmingham's, or a small town in some state that's affordable, there are nightmares waiting for you that you're not even aware of. Alabama is definitely a gang-infected state, and a city like Birmingham is very deceitful. You drive through the city and it looks quiet and peaceful, but trust me, the numbers don't lie. Don't let that fool you. Birmingham is a very dangerous city. I want to thank all my subscribers that are watching today's video from Alabama. I appreciate you sticking through with my channel, even though I have a lot of negative things to say about your state. But these things have to be said. The things that Martin Luther King had to say about Alabama were definitely not taken with love, but there were things that had to be said. Back then, Martin Luther King described Alabama as a bloodthirsty state who enjoyed watching violence as if it were a sort of entertainment. And sadly, many years later, the same thing remains true. I'm starting to see a massive influx of Alabama license plates in South Florida, something that I had never seen in the past. If you're from Alabama and you decide to move to Florida where I live, I want you to know that you're welcome here. And I'm not just saying that, I really mean it. It makes me happy that you chose my home as your place to live.